tell somebody. Reverend Al told you personally. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Where's this Bible? Keep it real. The views and opinions expressed on this broadcast are not necessarily those of either WGCB 620 AM, its staff or management, or our parent company, Glory Communications Incorporated. Get ready. Armstrong Williams is up next on WGCV 620 AM, where knowledge is power. Today, today is Saturday. Today is Saturday. Salad on Saturday. Give a shout out to WGCV 620 AM, Yolanda, and Tony Jameson, and Alex Snipes. That's Anthony in the background. He's the shy one, but he makes this work. If it were not for Anthony, we wouldn't even be on the air. It's just the truth. Oh, they're applauding. They're giving you some love, man. They're applauding. Oh, my goodness. And that was quick. I didn't even give them a cue. Oh, my goodness. Anthony just gave you a big applause. Oh, and you know what I probably do? I should talk about Anthony more because Anthony is my angel, okay? Yeah, yeah. He is my angel. Let me tell you what he has to do to get these shows on the air. I don't even want to know. Don't tell me. Just tell me we're live. Okay, that's all I want to know. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the right side of the Armstrong Williams Show. Info at rightsidewire.com. Info at rightsidewire.com. Newsletter. We got a newsletter. We have information. We have insider information that we're about to release. Logan Delaney, you're going to love our guest today. Okay, we're going to have some fun. You know, I'm the un- looking forward to it. You know, the unfortunate thing for me is that... Um, um, the unfortunate thing is that I don't always know who the guests are until... Three fifty nine. <laughs> I believe that. Oh, Logan, you know it's the truth, don't you? I know it's the truth. <laughs> but look, when I saw that Mike Velarde, who is a retired IRS criminal investigator, college professor and author, and as a former criminal investigator, he's in the inside IRS, he offers people uh, a unique perspective on how to solve their tax problems. And, and this was the best line. Everyone is blowing the horn for simple, simple tax code. And for a million good reasons. Every year, politicians pay election games with tax credits and regulations, and more pages are added to the tedious headache of following returns. Now, Logan, I'm going to probably be quiet for most of this half hour because this is the kind of show. Let me welcome Michael Velarde, and before he gets his engine started, I'm going to let you fire off the first salvo. Michael Velarde, welcome to the show, and we're so happy you're on the day. <laughs> Thank you, Armstrong. Oh, brother. Let me tell you, so Logan, hit it. Well, look, you know, we all, you know, my biggest grief with the IRS and our tax form is that the average, intelligent, hardworking American person, uh, you know, the taxpayer and worker can't fill out his or her own tax form. It, it rips me. It makes me so angry because we have to go and spend, 
you know, several hundred dollars to go pay somebody to fill out a tax form for us. That's another tax on us as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, you're right. It's very complicated. It's made complicated. I mean, the tax code is three times the size of the Bible. It's enormous. No, how many no times the size of the Bible? At all. You said, how, how, how much bigger than the Bible? It's about three times the size of the Bible. It's enormous. I, I, you didn't include the, uh, the regs, did you? Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you include the regs, it, it you know it's it's like um, uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica. Right. Go ahead, Michael. We want to hear your answer. Well, well, I mean, I mean, here, here's the situation. The situation is the reason it's so complicated is because Congress, who makes the laws, are paid to do so by constituents. Michael, and speak up a little more, man. You're too soft sure. with hold, the speaker. Hold on one Please, I know you don't have a solo speaker. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. I had to switch phones there. Um, and, and as a result, there's a lot of things in the tax code that, 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 you know, the government steers you in the way you should go, so to speak. You know, they take care of their own, and, and it's, a, it's a tragedy a lot of times. You know, I'm sure often you've heard, you know, certain times big corporations don't pay any tax that make billions of dollars, and yet the little guy will get hammered. So, um, you know, there, there's things in it. It's designed so that we have to kind of take advantage of what they do give us. You know what I mean? For example... Um, they'll subsidize your house by, by allowing you to deduct mortgage interest. So it behooves you to do that. Uh, however, you can't deduct credit card interest in any way. They will uh, give you breaks for putting your money into IRA. So it behooves you to do that. But you know something, Michael, let me, let me interrupt you. Yes. What it causes you to do, uh, you know, and, and the interest is a perfect example because, you know, 20 years ago you used to be able to deduct all interest, including your credit card interest and your right. investment interest, right. as well as your, your, your mortgage interest. Now what it encourages you to do is to take out a second mortgage. I mean, isn't that driving the housing crisis into a, uh, or, or a housing boom into a bust? Because you're forcing people to, to get advantage of it. The IRS says, hey, borrow against your house. Use your house as a piggy bank. No, that's true. There, there are certain things that are particularly, I think, very unjust. Let me give you one example. Uh, for instance, if you take a look at the itemized deductions on the Schedule A, you'll notice that you can, you can deduct your real estate taxes, and you can deduct state taxes, and certain other taxes. Are you familiar with that? The what tax? You can state taxes. Right. State I'm taxes, familiar with that. Real estate taxes. But, you know, yeah. they, they took away the ability to deduct Social Security and Medicare taxes. Now, those are a large part of the taxes you pay to the federal government. For instance, if I'm just going to use a number here, but it, 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 let's say eight and a half percent between the, the Medicare tax and the Social Security tax. So what that means is this: if you make a hundred thousand dollars, they're going to take eight and a half percent of that out of your pay right off the top. So you're only going to see eighty-five. You with me? Yeah. Then they're going to turn around and tax you on the whole 100000 Oh, wow. Because you didn't get the chance to deduct those two items. Now, they used to be deductible, but what happened was, I don't know, uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, it might have been like 12 years ago, the uh, Congress wanted to pass a tax increase. They couldn't get it through. So what they did instead is they disallowed you to take advantage of deducting Social Security and Medicare tax. So in a sense, essentially what happens is you're only going to receive on that hundred thousand eighty five thousand in income, but you're going to get taxes if you received a hundred thousand of it. How unfair is that? Hey, you know, my let, let, me, let me let me let me raise this slogan. Walk yeah. us through um, the president's thinking on taxing dividends thirty percent. Oh, I, 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 you know, he, he's thinking that every, everything is going to continue as normal and people are just going to pay more. But in reality, that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is when you get higher tax, marginal tax rates, there is an increased number of people who will seek to avoid those additional taxes. And they'll do that in ways by trying to go offshore, forming different corporations, putting money here, putting money there. And in essence, if you want to have more compliance, when I was on the job, what I've seen is the lower the rates, the more compliance you're going to get. It's as simple as that. If you're going to, you know, if you, if you, you have to pay 2% in taxes, everyone will pay it. It's no big deal. 
now you ask everyone to pay 60% in tax, everyone's looking for the run and running for the hills to, to, to possibly avoid doing that. And it's not, because, no, it's not because they're dishonest people either. Go ahead, Logan. No, what it, what it does is that people are acting rationally. People are looking for ways to keep, to, to maximize their after-tax income. Yes. And, you know, if you say, hey, I can maximize my after-tax income by, by not investing in the United States, but investing abroad, um, you're going to do that. Because, the, you know, the, you know that the tax man is going to tax you on your U.S. earnings, and and maybe the, the tax on your, your foreign earnings will be deferred until you bring them back to the United States. Yeah, are you, are you familiar with the UBS case? Somewhat. Okay. I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about corporations who do that no, all the time. What happened with UBS was once you know, they disclosed their, uh, the bank account holders to the Internal Revenue Service, the Internal Revenue Service had the Voluntary Compl- Compliance Program. I think it brought in close to $10 billion. Right. Uh, because there were so many offshore accounts. And, and, of course, what they did was, in response, they, they upped the penalty to a $50,000 penalty if you don't report a foreign bank account now, um, with penalties on top of that once they find out about it. So, so you know, we you know, and then the disclosures, I mean, it, it, I mean, just to fill out the information regarding your foreign bank account, why is the money there, what bank is it in, whose name is in it, I mean, it gets very, very detailed, very complex, so people... You know, it, it makes it tough to comply with the law, and if you don't comply with the law, there's a very stiff penalty. And and a lot of times, you know, people might come over here from Guatemala or Venezuela or whatever, and just have a little bank account back home, or you know. But because of that UBS thing, you know, they overshot the runway a little bit. And and what we're seeing is you're seeing a more and more complex tax code. It's not getting easier; it's getting more and more complex. So, so let's deal with this myth, uh, uh, because we're in media. Oftentimes, when some major newspaper or television program does a profile on someone and they talk about all the money that they have, uh, someone hits the lottery, a lot of people in my circle of influence says immediately, uh-oh, you just triggered an IRS investigation. I don't know if you wanted that, but that's exactly what you did. Are there certain people that the IRS target? Uh, are there things that raise red flags? Are there specific people that are targeted for political reasons that the government may see as an enemy of the administration, does those things actually go on? All right, let, let's take that one thing at a time. Let, let's talk about how, how your return will be pulled for audit. The, the IRS is a computer, and it, it's called the Electronic Fraud Detection System, okay? And it's set up, so it'll match, like, your W-2s and your 1099s. So if you don't report all your 1099s or your W-2s, you automatically be flagged by the computer, okay? If you're... Um, percentages, uh, and they use an average tax return, are, are, are really out of whack. For instance, let me give you a, a real-life example, but I'll change the names to protect the innocent, okay? Guy, and he's, he's a Jewish guy, we'll just use the name Goldstein just for the sake of you. I, I tell you what, l- let, me, let me do this. We're coming up on a break. I, I, I think this story is important because I think it's the kind of thing that our audience can relate to. Logan Delaney is always in the commentating chair on Wednesday, and we're just so glad that Michael Valadardi is joining us, a retired IRS criminal investigator having left that position in August 2010 after 22 years of admirable service. Randy, we see you holding another cause. We'll come back, and he's going to tell us his story. Don't go away. Info at RightSideWire.com. For more information on the Armstrong Williams Show, please visit our new website at www.RightSideWire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundit's views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.RightSideWire.com. Anderson Brothers Bank, a family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. Hello, my name is Ron Moulton. I'm running as a Republican for the city council in the nation's capital, a political arena dominated by the Democratic Party. I'm seeking office in Ward 7, overwhelmed by unemployment and poverty. For the first time in decades, we have an opportunity 
to be elected as the people that need the representation the most are now responding to the principles that will uplift them. For more information about my values and to donate, please visit www.ronmoton.com. Most Americans simply have never been taught the basics of money management, let alone how to secure their financial future. But there is hope. Financial Education and Literacy Advisors, also known as FILA, does what others don't. FILA teaches financial education. If you'd like more information about providing a financial wellness program for your employees, or a credit-bearing college course in personal finance, or other valuable programs, please visit MyFILA.com. That's M-Y-F-E-L-A dot com, or send an email to info at MyFILA.com. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas. Spectacular land prices, 8,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet lot, affordable prices, hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea. Just call 242-677-3120 or 3121 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. Okay, Michael Velarde, we were talking about high-profile cases where people talk about how much money you have. You hit the lottery. You make it all this dough. Does that trigger an IRS investigation? You're about to tell us a story. Yes, I was. Okay, so, so this, so, and I'm, I'm explaining to you how the computer works and how you're going to get triggered for an order, how you're going to get pulled. All right, I, I explained to you the W-2s and the 1099s. Well, this particular individual um, wrote, made $100,000. And again, I'm making up the numbers, so just so you know. Um, and then he had a $60,000 charitable contribution deduction on the Schedule A. So the computer pulled it for audit. Now, when they went out to ask him for his for, for proof, he sent them checks that were written out to... Um, some parish will say it's uh, Our Lady of Grace, and just just for namesake. So the agent said, "God, this geez, that doesn't make any sense. This guy is making a hundred thousand dollars. He's writing sixty thousand dollars worth of checks to the Catholic Church. Something's not right. Let's go check it out." So they go up to the church and they talk to him. They knock on the door. They talk to Monsignor Monsignor Caffero, and they say, "We don't want to know about this guy Goldstein, Bob Goldstein. What can you tell us about Bob Goldstein? He gives a lot of money to your church." And you're scratching his head and he's going, Bob Goldstein, Bob Goldstein. The guy that buys the change every week. Okay? He was buying the change. So instead of giving, he was going writing him a check for whatever the change was every week, getting the money and taking the deduction. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my got, goodness. Because he got greedy, <laughs> he, got, he got nailed. And not only did he lose the deduction, but, you know, he had other issues, uh, you know. Presumably, he went to jail for fraud. Well, that 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 could have been that could have been a possibility. That could have been a possibility. But if nothing else, he he got that that sixty thousand dollars got all thrown out, and he had to pay tax on it. So right, they've been heading for the rest of his life. So the point is, with the schedule is, if it's above a certain percentage, the computer will, you know, will pull it. Okay, if it looks unusual, they're going to get pulled. So that's how you're going to get it. If you win the lottery, and you report it, there's not a problem. You know. Uh, a lot of times, what happens with the lottery is they're going to withhold the money for state for state purpose for tax purposes anyway. So if you win ten thousand dollars, they'll give you six. The other money is withheld. So if you file your return and you report it, you'll get it. That shouldn't be an issue because there is the withholding of it. They just don't give you the million dollar check. They're going to give you the the million dollars less the withholding for tax purposes. Wow, Randy, you have a comment to Mike Velarde? Yeah, I, how y'all doing? What's up? What's up, Logan? How y'all doing? Hey, how are you? Fine, Randy. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say, cry me a river, because every time I hear about tax policies, I, usually the people that be talking about tax policies, you be talking about the Constitution and all that, the founding fathers and taxes and give me freedom and all of that. Don't tread on me. Let's go back to the taxes when when our country was founded. What was the tax rate then? Zero. There was no income tax. The tax rate wasn't no zero, man. It was zero. There's no there was tax. no income tax, Randy. When they, when they, when they, when they, when they set up, when they set up the country and started paying for things for the country, okay? okay there were tariffs. Let, let's not say when they were slave owners and all that. Listen, let's, listen let's to the guest. He explained it to you. There were tariffs. Right. There were tariffs on imported goods that came into the country. So a, tar a tariff is not a tax. 
Oh, it is a tax, absolutely. But there's no. There was so what, what do you mean? Well, let, let him finish. Let him finish the point he's making. It's a tariff, but however, please finish, Michael. Yeah, I said the income tax didn't come into effect until Woodrow Wilson was president in 1913. They passed it one Christmas when the Republicans went home. They passed it through. It started off. It was always a gradual tax, but it went from one percent to six. Six was the max. Six percent was the max. What was the rate? Tax rate. Six percent was the max rate. And if, if you earned over five hundred thousand dollars in income, and that was back in nineteen thirteen. Michael, you need to pick up, man. You're getting lower and lower on the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. What was the tax rate? What do you say the tax rate was? Six percent. Six percent. Six. For rich people, it was six percent. For everybody. Yeah. So when did it go up? Well, right after that, every administration since the, you know they had the ability to change those rates, and, and they, they've changed over time. I mean, when Jimmy Carter was president. The highest tax rate was something like 92%. It was ridiculous. He's going down. Okay, I'm also. It, well, I was trying to get at What was the highest rate? What was the highest rate ever for rich people over hundred to over $100,000? 100, the highest rate. Highest what was the highest rate in our country for people making over $250,000 million? What was the highest rate we ever had? I think it was 92%. Thank you. So now we're all the way down here and everybody's still crying. Oh, I'm so rich. I'm paying all these taxes. There's poor people. They're not paying no taxes. So... What you're what you telling me is that a poor person will want to switch with you and pay all your taxes, and you just go with they, with they, whatever they're making, a couple of 10000 maybe $13,000 a year, and not pay no taxes. Rich people kill me. Even hey, when the tax code with a small business. One question. One, one, one statement. One statement. When, when, when the Republicans keep saying that they want to give these small businesses tax breaks, they're not talking about no mom-and-pop stores. They're talking about conglomerates that claim to be small business. So when you give them a tax rate or a tax cut, it's not like a tax cut for mom and pop, okay? Some of these, some of these small businesses are making billions of dollars, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, getting the same uh, same cut, a uh, same tax cut as a mom and pop store. Something got to be done. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of rich people whining about their taxes, man. They've been going on death and taxes in our country forever. Since whenever you said it was 90%, let's go back to that and see if everybody start whining then. Randy, thank you for calling. Um, You're welcome. Michael, um, Logan, did you have a question to Michael before I followed up? No, why don't you follow up? So, so Michael, let me let me raise this with you. So, as we, so you're telling us that the IRS doesn't go on witch hunts. It doesn't target. Everything is computerized, so it makes it impossible. No, I didn't say that. They okay. Can only target if they want to. No question about it. And why would some? Why would someone be set up as a target? And speak up, please. Well. Usually, come on, Michael. Come on, total okay, trans. What'll, come what'll on. What happens is if you get somebody that's out there like being an active protester, they're going to go and make an example of that person. Wow. Did a you protester of what? Woo. Of taxes. Let's say you, you start having seminars. You're not going to pay taxes. Blah 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 blah. You know, you're going to be set up. You're gonna, they're going to look at that. Like Wesley Snipes. You know. You know. Yeah. When, that, when you're going to get situations like that, you're going to set yourself up. When you when you go. And you go tell the world, I don't pay my taxes, look at me, I have all this money, your neighbor, I mean, I have cases when I work there where, you know, the neighbors wrote letters, you know, this guy keeps bragging, he doesn't pay tax, and I pay my fair share, he owns this, he owns that, he has a house on the water, go get him. Well, they should be pursued, I'm sorry. Well, that's what happened. That's foolish. But, but tell me this, what about the, the individual who writes a letter to the New York Times and says... Taxes are too high. We shouldn't be paying these taxes. Um, you know, we should elect people who are going to reduce taxes. Does the IRS ever go after people who are doing legitimate protest in the media? Not unless they put in there something to the effect of, I won't pay my taxes because I don't think it's right. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of admission of failure to comply. Let, let, me, let me raise this with you then. Um... Are there people that have a tax issue who's very high up in the administration or some thought leader that you are about to make an arrest, about to send a letter, and somebody can call in on their behalf and stop it and give them a chance to work the situation out and rectify it if they can? I mean, I can't say I haven't seen stuff like that happen. I mean, I, I can remember a couple of instances where it did. And what happened in those instances? Well, just, you know, uh, I mean, 
You're struggling. Okay. It's not like you're struggling. You've been pretty efficient today, man. You've been yeah, straight talking. Yeah, well, well, it wasn't my, wasn't my case. But, but I, you know about it. You know about it. I know about it, yeah. I mean, there, there, was, there was a political incident. So uh, politics can influence whether you pursue someone or not. Oh, of course. I oh, mean, that, I mean that, there's, been, there's been senators that owe, that owe, you know, there's been former senators that owe, you know, six figures in back taxes. It would normally be a criminal case, but they're handling it civilly because of the position, of course. I mean, you, politics doesn't, and, and there's no, I mean, you got to be kidding. Of course politics would enter into it. You know, we look at somebody like Congressman Rango, yes. who's uh, at, at one point was head of the Ways and Means Committee, yes. who has incredible tax problems that, you know, if you and I had those tax problems, we'd probably go to jail. Yeah, yet, well. He was a very charismatic guy. He had a very good rapport with the with the IRS, where he worked with us in Brooklyn. Good rapport. He was the oh. boss. Yeah. <laughs> but they liked him. I mean, liked him. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is you can't pay for this kind of material. You know, so. so listen, are you saying to Logan and I and the audience that when you're nice and work with the IRS, you can get a break? I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the IRS is made up of people. They are human. Beings. You're human beings. If you treat people right, then, uh, you know, the, the, the chances are much better that they'll uh, work with you and, and, and do the right thing. And that's across the board, though. That's across the board. That's across the board. Yes. I mean, you don't, you don't know who you're going to deal with. I mean, that, that's like any, it's like any organization, you know? I mean, just like myself, I'm in the tax resolution business. Now, if you call my company, you're going to deal with me personally. You get my cell phone. You get to call me uh, from any time from 9 in the morning to 10 at night. You know, and and I make sure I get the job done. There's other companies. There's been horror stories. You know, we've had people come to us because they, you know, they pay a lot of money and nothing gets done. And when they call the office, they don't get an answer. You know, and the IRS is, is, is the same way. I mean, you're dealing with people and who you get and who you're going to work with is going to determine your, 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 if that's going to be a pleasant experience or an unpleasant one. But you will agree that the majority of the American people who file their taxes are honest. Yes. Yes, I think so. They are. And then some people can make innocent errors, which once you have a conversation with them, you know immediately that it was innocent and was not anything malicious or intentional, and you guys can rectify that immediately also. That's correct. Because judgment is very important to your investigations. Yes. I mean, you, 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 you always want to do the right thing. At least that was my position when I was there. I mean, you know, I never wanted to, to pursue somebody criminally that, really didn't have criminal intent. You know, I, I have to tell you, I have been, my, my companies and I personally have been audited a number of times, and I have to say the IRS agents uh, who audited us were very professional. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was nothing malicious or anything. Uh, and, and, you know, no, I, I wasn't doing anything fraudulent or my company wasn't doing anything fraudulent. Uh, you know, Errors do occur because this is such a complicated tax code yes. that uh, there's a lot of discretion, especially in complex tax returns, about what's correct. Oh, hold that, hold that. Michael, just stay there. We're going to have you come back and we're going to give you the right kind of goodbye. Just stay there. Um, ooh. Armstrong Williams returns in a moment. Six twenty a.m. A part of your community. Six twenty a.m. Thanks you for tuning into the Armstrong Williams Show. If you have a community event or program you want to share, call our community calendar uh, line now at 343-3429. That's three four three three four two nine. Remember, sharing information is how we guarantee that knowledge is power on six twenty a.m. Empowering our communities with knowledge. This is WGCV six twenty a.m. My parents were always there for me, but everywhere I turned, there was a relative or neighbor okay, pushing again, me. My again. old boss, Mr. Pittman, taught me valuable I'm lessons not, like working smarter, just not you, harder. My high school there. coach always asked about my grades. <laughs> he still does. Some days I feel like the entire neighborhood raised me. There's a difference between being but in the community now? and being a part of it, which is why McDonald's supports programs from community sports to college scholarships 365 days a year. The simple joy of being deeply rooted in the community. No, okay, that's your perspective. Let me get back on there. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Let me get back. Let me get back. 
Logan? Um, Logan, are you there? Logan? Uh, Michael? So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Busy, busy me. So, anyway... Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. My friends keep commenting on my comment. Oh, there's another one. So many comments on my comment. Oh, I can't wait to watch TV tonight. Playoffs! Hey guys, check out my new video game. Pew, pew. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? What? Huh? What? Hold What'd on. you say? Wait a sec, huh? what? This weekend, unplug. Take your family to the forest. There's nothing in the world like experiencing nature firsthand. Trees, paths, bluebirds, streams. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. From the vantage point, Mafatu saw six war canoes drawn upon the beach, but what held the boy's eyes in awful trance were the figures springing and leaping about the flames, darting, shifting, bounding toward the sky. The eaters of men, cannibals. Firelight glistened on their oiled bodies, on flashing spears and bristling decorations. Mafatu watched the strange scene, powerless to move, and he felt doom itself breathing chill upon his neck. In that very instant, he hello, heard hello, a hello. in the undergrowth. Four figures were tearing hello, toward hello, him hello, the jungle. Hello. He could see them now. He turned and ran blindly down the trail, slipping, sliding, stumbling, his breath all but choking in his throat. Hello, hello, hello. Only one thought gave him courage as he ran. His canoe, ready and waiting. If only he could reach it before the savages overtook him. Explore new worlds. Find out what happens next by reading the book Call It Courage by Armstrong Spenny. For other great book ideas, visit literacy.gov. A message from the library. Oh. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yes, yes. Hello, hello. We're coming up. We're coming up. We're coming up. Armstrong Williams on the right side. Oh, wow. Don't curse, speak English. We're here. Armstrong. Virtuous society. Armstrong. I dare you to listen. Hey, hey, turn it up. Hey. Okay. Armstrong. Hey, get on the right side. Armstrong. Elevate your mind. Armstrong. I'm Armstrong Williams on the right side. Armstrong. Yo, man, it's your boy, K.O. Yo. And you're tuned in to the most conservative of our brothers. Yeah. Armstrong. The Armstrong Williams Show. Please. Grow up. Uh, Logan, are you there? 
I'm here. <laughs> oh, my God. This thing just has a mind of its own today. Oh, it does, doesn't oh, it? God. Listen, brother, I was sweating bullets. Michael, are you still there? I am still Oh, there. my goodness. Thank you. Ken, are you on the line? Fine. Ken, you there? I'm here. Oh, can you hear me? Lord, we're live again. Thank you, Yolanda. Yolanda is such a patient soldier and calms me and guides me through crises. Thank you, Yolanda. You are so wonderful. I didn't panic. Okay. So, look, Ken, uh, we have um, now, uh, Michael, Ken is a candidate for office. Um, he's pursuing a uh, congressional seat in North Carolina, and he joins us every Wednesday at this time. We're going to have a little fun. Ken Leon Sink. Uh, is a conservative rep- Republican. But look, um, Ken um, Michael is a um, former criminal investigator retired with the IRS. And this conversation with him is just unbelievable. So, um, Ken, I'm going to let you ask a question to Michael about the IRS, especially do they ever pursue politicians and target them? Sorry about that, Michael. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, you know, thank you very much for having me on, and just want to uh, say thanks to everyone out there. My- Michael, you know, one thing I am interested in is political interference at the IRS. Now, I heard a story when I was up as a congressional investigator. Uh, I was taking down uh, uh, MF Global and uh, looking into them. I heard a story from someone on the other side saying they heard about the IRS uh, being told by a senator to go after uh, uh, someone, and I, I won't say where because that'll give it away, and that that guy got this total huge audit and really cost him a lot of money, and it was completely politically motivated. Now, it could be totally lore, but I'm just wondering if you've ever heard anything like that. There, there are obviously. There, there speak are up, speak up, Michael. We do want to hear you. There, there are politics involved in the IRS. I, I, w- I wouldn't be shocked to hear something like that. I wouldn't be shocked. But how do you how do you think it makes the average person feel when you realize that no one, no one starts out at the same starting gate and ends up at the same finish line? Well, I mean, life life is just not fair. That's, you know, you know what I mean. It's it's just not fair. I mean, it's it is what it is. I mean, you know, power. Uh, you know, sometimes things are politically motivated. I mean. It's, it's, it's the way it is. Well, the most important you know, thing Armstrong, is that we appreciate your honesty. Go ahead, Logan. Uh, you know, look, my issues in general are not with the bureaucrats at the IRS. My issues are with the people in Congress. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, bu- the bureaucrats are only doing what the congressmen have, you know, have passed and, and what they're telling them to do through their legislation. And, right. you know, it's not the bureaucrats who've complicated our tax system. Uh, I mean, they've written, sure, they've written the rules, sure, but right. uh, but the, the ones who really complicated, I mean, if you want to get angry at somebody, let's get angry at our politicians, both parties who have corporate giveaways, you know, I mean, who have, you know, crony capitalism, who decide that, you know, the best way to buy votes is to, uh, reduce the tax rates of certain citizens and increase the taxes uh, through other citizens. They use tricky methods like deductions. You know, they have those of us who live in low tax states like Florida subsidize uh, 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 people in high tax states like California and, and and New York because you know, and they do it in a sneaky way through tax deductions. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you want to get angry at somebody, let's get angry. And start criticizing Congress. So, Ken, you're running for office. Should we? Is this what you're going to become if you're elected? Uh, absolutely not. I, mean, I am completely agree with Logan. The problem is both parties have seen the tax code as their personal little piggy bank, where they can dole out favors and where they can uh, make their social policies exist through tax expenditures, through deductions, through corporate giveaways. We've got, I mean, from the farthest to the left to the farthest to the right written into the tax code policy prescriptions it shouldn't be in there we should have a simple flat tax i mean we, we right. this should be a, a very easy process or, or a fair tax i mean I'm, I'm open to that as well but the problem is that politicians get up there and realize that if they write in the laws the average citizen 
isn't going to be looking carefully enough and realize that this deduction is not actually an above-the-line exemption, which means we're putting money back into your pocket, or that you get paid by the government for buying something. You shouldn't be making policy from the tax code. It's, I mean, this is a strong word, but it's, it's pretty disgusting. It's, it's very upsetting. That's one of the reasons I'm running. Michael, your response? I agree with him. I mean, he's right. I mean, you could make it real simple. You know, 3% tax on everything you buy, and there's no, you know, there's no catering to one group or the other. I mean, if you, if you spend the money, you pay the tax. If you don't spend the money, you don't pay the tax. And, 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 the, and enough taxes will still come in as long as the, uh, the economy stays the same, and it would probably go up quite a bit because more people would have more money, and you could still pay the bills. I mean, the, re- the real issue is overspending, I think. If you look at the way budgets have increased over the years, I mean, it is ridiculous. In the, in the, in the three years that President Obama has been in office, um, he spent over $5 trillion. I mean, President Bush spent $4 trillion. I mean, it, it's unheard of. When Carter was president, uh, that was the first time we went to a trillion-dollar debt. You know, in almost 200 years of uh, 200 years, you know, the country was in existence for 200 years. It was the first time we did a trillion. Now we're spending trillions over just a very short period of time. It's crazy. Well, we're spending trillions that we're not taking in in revenues. Yeah, but the fact that we're spending it, yeah, well, I, but but what's worse is that we're borrowing it. Right. Right. Okay, absolutely. Right. That even that's the problem. Absolutely. 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 Look, what what can we do to change the bureaucrats? If anything, uh, Michael, is it going to get worse? Um, Ken, we would welcome your input on this because it seems like this problem here, this beast is growing. You're this not is cutting where I the size jump of it. in first, if you let me. It's Ken. Uh, you know, I, this is where I slightly disagree a, a little bit with, with, with Logan. Um, I think the bureaucrat, like I said last time, is an animal uh, that ought to be extinct. So let's turn the bureaucrat into a technocrat, or let's just get rid of him entirely. Let's get the, bu- the bureaucrat is something that exists only to perpetuate itself. That's the problem with our government. I gave the Reagan quote last week. We, we have people who are getting huge salaries compared to the average American, and their only care in the world is to increase their little fiefdom and, and live in that fiefdom and make it get bigger to pass it on to the next bureaucrat under them. Mm. I mean, I've been in Washington. I've seen it. It's not just the people in Congress. The people in Congress are at fault. They created the animal, but now we need to go hunting, I think. You know, that's a bad analogy, but we should, we should get rid of both. But, Ken, I'm going to... Uh, tell you that the fox is in charge of the chicken coop. <laughs> the fox, in this case, happens to be Congress, because Congress uh, gets benefits and payments that nobody else in America gets. I mean, who else gets a full pension after two years? Okay, <laughs> Congress is the only one that gets that, and they are the ones. They are the bosses. Of the bureaucrats. They're the ones that set the budget. If Congress says, you know, there will only be 100 IRS agents in, in its congressional bills, they pass a budget that only funds 100 IRS agents, guess what? No matter what the bureaucracy says, there will only be 100 bureaucrats in that agency. It starts with Congress. Without a doubt, you're right. Without a doubt, you're right. The responsibility, you know, you know the, bu- the bureaucrat is like a dumb animal. Uh, it just sits there and eats and gets fatter and fatter and, and starts taking up more space. Uh, but that's a great analogy. Congress is full of the foxes. And, and you're right. That's where the, that, that's where the responsibility lays. I, I mean, I'm, I've been hitting the campaign trail. I'm talking about this time and time again. We keep sending the same person up to Congress, up to Washington, and expect a different result. That's insanity. What we need to do is send up someone totally different with a different vision and then hope and pray that they keep to their guns and don't get, like you said last time, uh, tempted uh, into changing their ways once they've got a little bit of power. Uh, i like to hear, Michael, your take on that. Well, I mean, I tend to agree with him. I mean, absolute power corrupts absolutely when they when, they, when people have too much power, they abuse it. I've seen it in government. I've seen it all over the place. It's human nature. So that that that's why it needs to be curtailed. You, when you shrink the budgets, when you shrink the power that they have, the, especially the power to tax, is an incredible power. And um, you know, it, the, there's people that will pay these congressmen dearly so that they, they get tax breaks. So it doesn't cost them money. It'll cost somebody else money, and it's not right. But it is human nature. Wow. Have we made progress, Michael, in any areas? 
I don't know. I, I mean, the health care bill, which put, put the onus, it was a lot of tax changes this year. Uh, it's going to make it much more difficult for the IRS starting in 2014. They're going to be collecting uh, a $750 penalty from anybody that doesn't pay for health insurance. It's going to be kind of more of a nightmare if that thing sees its way through to that point in time. Um, it's going to be... It's, is the IRS is going to be involved in collecting all that money and uh, going after people who don't pay. And what about I, that stealth? What about that stealth tax, which uh, which is nearly four percent that they're putting on unearned income that was sort of hidden in Obamacare? That's Obamacare was a problem. The bill it, it's it's added a lot to the tax code and people don't realize it, and it's going to be very problematic. There was a lot of things in that bill. Um, the, the, you know, the new 1099 regulations. They doubled all the penalties if you fail to report a 1099. Um, the amount of people that have to report 1099. There was, a, there, was, there was so much stuff in Obamacare, it's an absolute nightmare, and it's going to come to fruition real soon, unless the Supreme Court overturns it. Well, you know, I, I, I have to tell you, I have to tell you this. Um, it's, uh, I see we're coming up on a break here, so... Ken, can you stay with us the full hour, Michael? I sure can. Yes, okay, good. Oh, okay, good. We're gonna. This, this is good. This is good. This is this is good medicine. This is good medicine. Oh, we're not too far off. We're pretty good. That's not too bad. That's all right. Okay, we're good. We're doing okay here. Oh, just a couple of. I mean, we'll be For back. More information on the Armstrong Williams Show. Please visit our new website at www.rightsidewire.com. There you can find his syndicated column archive, view live streams, and get your favorite conservative pundits' views on the current issues affecting the American people. From building wealth to foreign policy, stay connected with Armstrong Williams and his colleagues at the all-new www.rightsidewire.com. Anderson Brothers Bank. A family-owned and operated establishment that blends traditional personal service, local market awareness, and advanced technology to meet the financial needs of its customers. Visit abbank.com or call 843-464-6271 to see how they can assist you with your banking needs. Anderson Brothers Bank, celebrating 75 years of community banking, the way it should be. Stability right in your backyard since 1933. Hello, my name is Ron Moulton. I'm running as a Republican for the city council in the nation's capital, a political arena dominated by the Democratic Party. I'm seeking office in War 7, overwhelmed by unemployment and poverty. For the first time in decades, we have an opportunity And welcome back to the broadcast. As you listen to our commercials, I'm going to talk during the commercials because we had a little technical problem here, but um, it's kind of entertaining. For more information about my values and as you listen to Ron Moe, don't forget about us at info at rightsidewire.com. Okay? Most Americans simply have never been taught the basics My of money feeling. management, let alone Talk how to secure the financial future. But there okay. is hope. Financial Education and Literacy Advisors, also Very known important. as FILA, does what others don't. Tell them, Blake. FILA teaches financial education. If you'd like more information about providing a financial wellness program for your employees, or a credit-bearing college course in personal finance, or other valuable programs, please visit MyFILA.com. That's M-Y-F-E-L-A dot com, or send an email to info at MyFILA.com. Hi, this is Armstrong Williams with an opportunity to own a piece of paradise in Nassau, Bahamas. Spectacular land prices, 8,000 square feet, 20,000 square feet lot, affordable prices, hilltop properties with views of the magnificent sea. Just call 242-677-3120 or 3121 or go to info at rightsidewire.com and leave your information. Where heads of state, sports, entertainment, and political celebrities meet. You're listening to Armstrong Williams. So, Ken, what is missing in this discussion that should be a part of it? And you would you be. Know, I, I, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, I think what's missing is um, a discussion of the, the purpose of why do we tax? Uh, I'm going to get philosophical. I got made fun of. Uh, 
for the correct reason last time for uh, going to Yale Law School, which where we don't learn law, but we do learn a lot of philosophy. So uh, this is w one of the things that I think we need to talk about. You know, are we taxing people so we can uh, redistribute the wealth? Because that's, that's what Mr. Obama thinks, and, and, and that's what um, most of the Democrats I know think. And they see the tax code as a way of uh, extending their social, proper, or their social uh, prerogative, uh, their social policy of, of redistributing wealth. Now, there are others who see the tax code as simply a way of funding what uh, is required to keep the government running. That's how I see it. You know? And I see it as taxing income. <laughs> and, and, and what is income? Right? That's a philosophical question as well. So I, mean, I think we've got to get to the basics. And the problem is our tax code makes no sense. Uh, sometimes it taxes income, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it is a redistributive uh, property, or it says we as a government like solar panels, so we're going to let you uh, buy them for half price by giving you uh, uh, a uh, exemption, uh, a cash rebate, in essence. Uh, and sometimes it acts with conservative principles. So it's, 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 about, it's about principles. I think we should have a limited government, and the tax code should fund that. And if we have a limited government, our taxes will be a lot lower. And that's it. I think redistribution of wealth is uh, is a terrible idea. Uh, Michael, what our country stands well, for. he just hit on something. I mean, that's something. And when I was there, it bothered me too. The, the earned income tax credit is a perfect example of that. And when, when we went out to the field, actually, we investigated fifty percent of the people that claimed it, it was it, it, were, it was some sort of fraud involved. And that's a perfect example. It's a credit where you get you could not pay any tax at all, and actually have the government pay you somebody else's taxes back to you. So if you owed uh, $300 and you were able to get the earned income credit for, for, um, for $1,300, they will send you a $1,000 check. So not only did that person not pay taxes, but we, the IRS gave somebody else's tax money to them. Isn't that welfare by another name? <laughs> yeah, that's Didn't they throw keys uh, in the way? And I, the I've always thought that that credit, if you want to keep a credit like that, what you have to do is limit it to the amount of money that the person actually paid to the government so that the government would not be giving out somebody else's money but instead that person would, would pay nothing but, in, but the way the credit is and as he just said it redistributes the wealth it's going to take somebody else's tax dollars and give to this person because they only earned x amount of dollars so we're going to reward them for not earning a lot of money you know i think we just pointed out something that the the one of the problems with the irs is that they've been charged by Congress to be not only a tax collection agency, but also a welfare agency. I mean, you know, they're redistributing money. They are doing the, you know, Congress's will and the government's will to to redistribute money to uh, the favorable classes. Those favorable classes may be poor people who get the the the, the, uh, uh, the credit that you're talking about. Or they may be oil companies who get some other kind of credit, or they may be solar companies. But the fact is that the, the IRS is expected to do too much, and we should really look at simplifying it and just give it the sole job of collecting revenues and, and, and let other agencies of the government, if we want to redistribute income, let's do it explicitly so that it's a line item in the, in the budget so all Americans can see it. Um, Michael? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, it should be simplified. The, the IRS is a very tough job. I mean, it's a big organization, and, and there's a lot involved, and there's a lot of people, especially in this economy. This economy has been horrible. I mean, I have a lot of clients that have run into issues with the IRS, and, and I'm sure if you have, you know, people out there that need help, uh, we do that. I've been able to save some taxpayers. I've, I've saved $30,000. Others, uh, I've saved their house. And I've been able to, to really, you know, help them in many ways because I don't think people are equipped themselves to deal with the IRS the way they're set up because they just don't have the knowledge. They don't know what to do and how to do it. And as a result, they find themselves really being a victim. And that's really a shame. Ken? That's a, that's a course of government. I'll never forget uh, uh, Professor Gratz, one of the just world-renowned tax professors, telling a story uh, of how he went in to his audit. I mean, this guy wrote the textbook on tax law, literally, uh, you know, and, and went into his, uh, uh, into his audit. Uh, 
and got so frustrated <laughs> with the way he was being handled <laughs> because they didn't understand what they were talking about and were trying to manipulate the situation uh, that he had to hire you know, accountants and, and never dealt with it again. I, you know, I, I know tax law pretty well. Uh, I definitely know tax policy. I've gotten accountants because we've created this system where the course of government will, will, will really put its hand down and, and, and hurt the little guy. That's what's really upsetting about this, and it blows my mind that the Democrats are such supporters of this uh, expansive government and expansive role of the IRS, when actually it's the poor people that are getting hurt most, or the middle class most likely. Actually, because the poor people won't be paying the, the taxes. It'll be the middle class taxpayers who are getting the, hurt the most. Uh, you know, they're, they're so-called target demographic, not the uber-rich uh, business people. You know, we've come full circle in one respect because we started off this discussion at the beginning of the hour uh, saying that the IRS, you know, you know, what is most frustrating is that the average intelligent American can't fill out his or her own tax form. And now you're telling me that tax experts can't fill out their own tax for forms. What has this country come to? Well, it's crazy. And it's even more difficult if you don't know how to deal with them. I mean, and, and if, I, I mean, and if there are listeners out there, and if they do have a problem, I'm just going to give out my number because. Please, man, listen. We don't want you to have no shame. You're a good man. You got integrity. Don't be ashamed to promote your product because it's either going to rise and fall on its own merit. We don't have a problem with entrepreneurship and empowering businesses on this show. So don't be apologetic. Okay. Well, if, if there's anybody out there and they have an issue with the IRS and you need help, please call me at. 888-873-8825. Again, that's 888-873-8825. Or you can go to my website, which is www.mikevillardiea, which stands for enrolled agent, dot com. That's mikevillardiea.com. And I have a staff of people, and we, that's what we do. We, we love to help people. We've gotten, I've had a lot of success. And that's been really, really good. I got clients that uh, that have actually given me their house keys and let me live in their house because I've saved their house from from uh, seizure. So, um, you know, when you call us, the difference is you're going to get my personal cell phone number. You'll have access to me from nine in the morning to ten at night, and I make sure I get the the work done, the job done for you. So, so if there, you do have an issue, please call us, and we're happy to help. And Logan and Ken. Many people fear the IRS, and they have many tax problems. And some people don't file their taxes um, because they feel that they don't owe the government anything, so they don't have to pay. I mean, sometimes ignorance can be very costly, right, um, Michael? Yes, no, it can. Because what happens if you don't file your, file your taxes? The IRS is going to get all the W-2s and all the ten, you know, that you should have also received. Okay, then they're going to file what's called a substitute return for you. When they file the substitute return, they make it very painful. They give you no benefits of the doubt on anything. I mean, you don't you get the minimum exemptions, the minimum standard deductions, the minimum of everything. You're going to get hit with the maximum tax. After the file, a, a, a substitute return is filed, you're going to get a big tax bill in the mail. You're going to have 30 days to which to pay it. If you don't mm. pay it within the 30 days. They're going to take aggressive action against you. Lean. So, Michael, take... Michael, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Yes. You have somebody who makes ten thousand dollars a year. Yes. Okay. They say, hey, you know, I'm not. Uh, you know, they withheld some money. Uh, you know, they took out my my uh, social security and Medicare taxes. Uh, they withheld a few bucks. He said, every time I fill out this thing, I get money back. I'm just not going to waste the time filling it out this year because I'm not going to owe any money. What happens? Well, what, what's going to happen is even with ten thousand dollars, I mean, uh, you, you you're going to owe a little something, okay? A little, it won't be much, but it'll be a little something. And what's going to happen? They're going to do that substitute return, and you're going to get hit with a tax. And if you don't pay the tax, you know, you're going to get a thirty day letter. If you don't pay the tax, they're going to start a uh, you know collection action against you, and they'll they'll file a lien to protect the government's interest because they want you to file. They want you to file. I mean, it, even if actually, you don't owe taxes, guys, you don't owe taxes, we are taxes. out of time. Logan, Ken, Michael, we've got to have you back, man. Oh, man, you're I mean, you're a beast. Thank you. We enjoy that. Logan, uh, you're always the beast of all the continents. And Ken, you're an up and coming beast. 
<laughs> can I can I say one thing? Oh no! Oh no! No no! Well, you can give out your I website. Say welcome we, to the zoo. Go ahead. We're out of time. Go ahead, Ken. Quickly. Facebook.com slash Ken for Congress. I want 300 Armstrong Williams fans as my friends in the next three days. That's what I'm putting out there. Man, I, I dare you to do it. You have, a, a you have, you it. have, you have low expectations, man. You need to raise your expectations. Hey, then you know what? Give me three thousand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hey, everybody, thank you for joining us. WGCV, Rolanda, you were wonderful today. Thank you, and God bless you from the Armstrong Williams Show. Views and opinions expressed on this broadcast are not necessarily those of WGCV, 620 AM, its staff or management, or our parent company, Glory Communications Incorporated. Next, you get to talk with PA on your way home. The PA Bennett Show on WGCV, 620 AM, where knowledge is power. 620 AM, a part of your community. May and Mary Scholarship Fund presents a new scholarship available to high school seniors. It's available to students nationwide. The application deadline is March 31st, and winners will be announced on Mother's Day, 2012. To apply, please contact www.